Welcome back, folks. My name's Joe's Bad, and this is episode four of my survival Let's Play series. I was doing some caving between episodes, and I decided to click record because I heard a bunch of ca uh, zombie noises um, in an area that I was pretty sure there wasn't any caves. I thought it was solid, um, so I decided to investigate, and there it is. I found a zombie spawner, which is something that I'm definitely not going to completely forget about in my uh, quest to reach 30 levels this episode because I, uh, yeah, I found a, uh, I, I have a Silk Touch enchantment that's just kind of waiting for me, um, but I found this spawner, and it is not something I'm going to get to this episode, but I will get to it soon, probably. Uh, definitely not going to forget about it for a long time. Uh, oh, and uh, got into a little bit of trouble here. Didn't die. Uh, but did, uh, did have to fight off a horde. Um, these guys are, oh god, I forgot, I forgot that I fell. Um, I think that I actually managed to save my life a little bit, though. Sorry, this, I, I'm just re-watching this footage, is a little intense. Uh, I, I kind of forgot that this happened, because a lot has happened in this last week. Uh, I had a little bit more time to record than usual, so I got a lot done, including mostly finishing the, uh, the starter structure. The first, I guess, I am going to use it as my home base, and I'm going to operate out of it, which means I need to move my storage and set up a forge in there, and there's a lot of detail and interior work I need to do. But by the end of this episode, uh, we will have most of the structure finished, and we'll also reach 100 days in this world. Um, I've died in this world a couple of times, so it's not survived 100 days, but the original intent of this world was a hardcore survival 100 days. Um, so it's kind of nice to reach a hundred days uh, in survival to see just what I would have accomplished in that video um, though I may have gone at a slightly faster pace in hardcore I don't I don't quite remember but the uh, the hardcore version of this world uh, it only lasted less than 40 days um, and here we are this is already well beyond uh, what that initial video was and I'm running out of clips from it I've got like one more that I want to use um, but it is probably not one I'm going to get to for a couple episodes, so I think I'm, I'm going to put pause on my flashbacks for a while, uh, though I have had the thought of incorporating flashbacks from some other hardcore playthroughs, um, particularly when I do things like uh, go to the nether, which uh, turns out I'm doing that this episode, um, as well as like going to the end fortress eventually, because um, I, did, I did manage to find the stronghold in my 17th hardcore playthrough. Um, it's actually really funny. In that hardcore playthrough, my base was, like, less than 200 blocks from the stronghold. Uh, I didn't even realize that at the time, but it was... that. That's another really good seed that I might revisit at some point. Um, because I really liked that base location and just kind of how that one was working out. So I might, I might share that one eventually. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead. I'm going to make my way back to the surface, and there's a lot of carving and a lot of building that I need to do. Right, so uh, I lied. Uh, I dropped off the resources from that caving expedition, and then I actually realized that I was going to need a lot more mud, which means I should return to those mud pockets that I found and see if I can find more of the mangrove. Um, just, I'm going to need a lot of mud, and I don't want to manually farm it. I've got the coordinates of where I found those two spots, so I'm going to figure out which direction I need to go. And then I, uh, I'll meet you guys over over there, uh, unless I find something else that interesting that happened. After a bit of a trek, the donkey and I did finally find the mango grove, uh, but as you can see, the footage is a bit cooked, so uh, I'll, I'll join you guys after I've gathered the mud. So I saw Stress Monster's video where she farmed a bunch of mud by mining it underneath, and I loved that, and also my FPS was a lot better by not rendering the vines in. So I got a bunch of stacks of mud, and let's go ahead and head back home where now I need to get a ton of copper. A big part of why I went to get that mud was to gain XP so I could get the Silk Touch pickaxe that I wanted. So now I think instead I decided that I was just going to go to this cave here towards the back of my uh, back of my valley and uh, I've, I've not explored it much in either the hardcore or in this one but I do remember seeing it and thinking you know this might be a cool place for another portal um, so instead of building a cool cave for another portal I'm just gonna make use of one that already exists I'll modify it and update it 
Um, but I really, yeah, I've been back here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't really go anywhere. Or if it does, I have a lot of other ways of getting there because all of the caves in the mountains that are surrounding this, um, they're all connected uh, in some way or another. So we're gonna go ahead and dig out a spot for the portal here. Um, I like to make my portals a four by four um, just because, I don't know, I like it. Uh, so I've got enough obsidian to do that. I'm not gonna worry about my corners. Sorry, uh, anyone who that bothers. But I'm not gonna see him in this one, so why why would I worry too much about that? Alrighty, portal is built, and this this will do. Uh, don't need to worry too much about the aesthetics. I'll I'll make a really fancy one later. But for now, this is just I'm just going in there to get some quartz. Okay, I've got my iron armor, um, and I've got my pickaxe, which I don't want to lose, but I'm willing to. I have diamonds to replace it. I don't like going to the nether and this is not a great nether spawn um i i need to get this a little more secure to prevent ghasts and then i'm just here for quartz i'm just here for quartz i'm just here for quartz and i uh yeah i need to get this place secured Alrighty, quartz mined and experience gained. It is time for silk touch. And there we go. Let's go ahead and combine this with our uh, first pick here. And now we've got efficiency three, unbreaking three, and silk touch. That's all I really could ask for here. Now it is time to get to carving, um, making room, and then there's a lot of foundation laying that needs to be done. So I've I've got a lot of work to do. All right, so the first step of really making progress here on this build is going to be carving out the rest of the circle uh, here into the mountainside, um, which means I need to do a lot of digging and I need to do a lot of, of stone breaking. And I'm doing this uh, both on this level and on the lower level as well. Um, I plan on carving also deeper into the mountain on the lower levels, um, but I'll get to that later. Uh, for now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this area, and I will get right back to you guys. While I was recording this carve, I, uh, had a rare opportunity. I was being harassed by phantoms because I just wanted to work through the night, um, and I got so close, so close to getting the, uh, the, the, uh, the achievement here. Two birds, one stone, or whatever, where you take out two phantoms with one crossbow. Um, I had them both weakened, and I, I had my shot nearly lined up, and I killed one. Oh, I would have had them. I just, I fired too early. Um, so that was the highlight of this carve. Alrighty, I have finished hollowing out the, uh, interior, um, in this room, as well as the other side. Uh, and now it is time to start doing some of the interior work. I'm nowhere near at a point of resources where I can fully dig out the interior, but on the upper floor, I know I want to work on getting some of the, uh, some of the, the, the walls in, some doorways, um, and I want to get the staircase, you know, not looking hollow, um, and I'm gonna match it on the other side, um, just... I guess I'm not really sure what I want to do, but I do know that this temple is significant to whatever civilization used to be in this uh, in this valley. Um, I also know that I have an idea that they, they had some fascination with the setting sun, um, which is why they've got the large white uh, or large wide window facing out to the west. Um, you can actually get a pretty cool glimpse of the sunset at the top of the window. Um, which is, is pretty satisfying to watch. Um, I also know that this civilization um, was connected to some of the other villages that may still remain in this area. Um, I know there's the one over by the Cherry Grove. There's also one on the way to the Mangrove Swamp. Um, nothing really interesting there. I, I didn't even include the clip in this video. Um, but it's, it's just a small village, nothing fascinating. So I've built a staircase up to where I've got the current top floor established. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and follow the wall lines that I already have established here and build up some sort of kind of pathway through the structure. Um, takes me a while to figure all of this out. I, I second guess myself a lot through the process, um, especially trying to figure out what, what looks good, what's functional, what's the purpose. 
Um, and these staircases, the entrances are pretty narrow. Um, but I think that's because at least this upper area um, is reserved for priests and those serving in the temple. Um, and so even getting up here, you like you have to be someone who's part of the temple. So this narrow staircase is not really designed for the public. Um, it would only really become public after it's become a tourist destination. And then it's just a fun quirk where you talk about how you've like climbed up through. These are the, the narrow passageway that different servants of the altars would come through. Um, this back room here, I think I might turn into my smelting room. Um, since this whole thing is going to end up being my actual base. Um, and I also, I, I know... I know I have a lot of work to do um, in terms of detailing. My plan right now is just to get it all built, and then I will come through with cracked stone brick, mossy stone brick, cobblestone, all those fancy block variations. And when I'm doing that detailing, uh, I'll make a video kind of talking through my process and my thoughts on how to do those sorts of details. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the build. I uh, noticed I wasn't recording. I also realized that I had nowhere near enough copper to do the next part of the build. Um, so I threw down a few foundations for some structures that will be part of this ancient ruin. Um, not sure what they'll be yet, but I'll get there. And now I'm going to go grab a ton of copper and I'll be right back. So I made my way back to that copper ore vein that I found. And I got a bit over six stacks of copper. Actually, I think it might have been exactly six stacks of copper. Uh, but stacked up here, you know, it uh, it looks looks pretty good. I uh, got a decent view of everything down below. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mine this all up. We'll see how much copper ore we get. And then, then at last, I will uh, go ahead and get to building. Alrighty, when all is said and done, six stacks of raw copper ore converts to one, two, three, four, five, just just over five stacks of raw copper ore blocks. Um, that's, yeah, that, that should last me a while, hopefully. Um, this, this next part of the build is going to require a lot of copper, and I'd like to make it out of solid copper, but I've built one of these before, and I used solid copper blocks, and I had to keep going back for more copper. So I think I might use cut copper for this next part. Um, I'm sure it'll look fine in the end. Uh, I'm just going to have to trust the process. But at this point, I need to let all of this smelt and do a little bit more work. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a building montage here, and we'll see how well I do. Actually, uh, before we get to that building montage, there's something very important that I need to take care of. Um, this, this here right now, this clip is from Day 99. Uh, this at this point I am crossing the hundred days threshold and I felt that I needed to honor um, the hundred days that I attempted you know I, I didn't even make it past day 40 but I really I love this seed I love this valley and I wouldn't have made this series if it hadn't been for that uh, that hardcore death so I think what I'm going to do is find the approximate location where I, uh, I first came upon this valley in the hardcore playthrough. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and find a fitting spot to uh, lay down just a little memorial. I mean, after all, it's not truly 100 days until you build a monument, right? It, uh, it's not much, but it is it is what we need to signify the hundred days. Uh, just a small little grave that overlooks the whole valley. Um, gotta make sure I put on my feather falling boots as we will go ahead and run our way back to the temple. Um, I guess I'm calling that now. It's a temple. I don't know. Again, it's something to do with the setting sun. That's as far as my lore has gotten. Um, but let's go ahead and run back here, and we will enjoy the sunset of day, uh, day 100.
Alrighty, and with that, I think we are just about done. Um, if you didn't notice or see it as we were building it, uh, the uh, tower on top of my round area is an observatory. Uh, I did not come up with this off the fly. I will have a link below for the tool that I used to help me plot this out. Um, but it is, I'm quite happy with this, and it is the start of what is going to be an incredible build, I hope. So anyways, folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. Also, I have four name tags, I have three dogs, and I have a donkey, and they all need names. So please, comment down below with name suggestions. And I will catch you guys in the next one.